Okay. Right, morning, everybody, um, or evening, or middle of the night, wherever you are. So, um, again, <laughs> I've just rolled out of bed, and we're just going to do a very short yoga session. Um, yeah, let's see how, if we feel better in about 20 minutes. So, I would suggest, if we're as sore and stiff as I am when I first roll out of bed, let's just start doing some work where we roll backwards and forwards. If you need a knee cushion, that's always helpful for the knees. These kind of knee cushions. So at the moment, I have my, my two Ukrainian guests are also just to the side of the camera. They may ask questions, but we're just rocking like this. Okay, can you do that? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, good idea. Move it back. Yep. No, you're not on screen. They're very worried they're on screen, but actually the only way the screen starts here. Okay. There. That's where it starts. And it finishes there. Okay. Backwards. All right, guys. Backwards and forwards. So this is really good for your wrists. And I know it, it, um, one of my Ukrainian guests, I won't name them because uh, that, that's private to them, but one of my Ukrainian guests is, um, has been doing running since she came. They both run. So I'll just do it a little bit more vigorously this morning. But remember, you can do right over or you can do little ones, like I so. said. Backwards and forwards, see how you go. I'm just going to adjust the lighting. Keep doing that for a moment. Okay, so you'll feel the wrists are beginning to get some weight bearing through them, which will definitely strengthen those bones. And what I like, like to remind my students is that weight bearing is a good prevention measure for osteoporosis weight bearing exercise because it strengthens the bones, it sends a very strong signal, defends more calcium to that area. So we very rarely weight bear through our wrists. So if you can do a kind of lifted cobra, but not for long because it's hard on the wrists. And if that's too painful, do what I always recommend, which is roll something up just a little so that your fingers are on the mat, but your heel of your hand is up slightly, okay? And then that lifted. And eventually that will feel too much, but you can drop the pelvis like so. See how nice that is? Dropping the pelvis and getting that lovely, soothing lower back, back bend. And then look up and drop the shoulders, opening the heart. Yay. Okay, that feels too much already, so coming out. And then as we come out, what I recommend is doing some wrist work, like so. Yeah. If you want to open a window, do make it a bit too hot. I haven't invented a name for this one. What could it be? I don't know. The graceful wrist work. Okay, and then from side to side and then circles, and then circles. So I think a little bit of soothing would be good. And then we need to do a little bit of energizing so we get through our day. Wow. So um, technically in yoga, it's a good idea to take your watch off. I've got my Fitbit and my watch, don't go there. Um, but obviously in the morning, I've got so many things to do. Sometimes I just leave them on, it's easier that way. Then from there, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to come into some kind of squat. And you might already be thinking, oh, heck, I can't squat. But you might have some kind of support for a squat, mm. or you might not need it. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Are you OK? Yeah, 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 yeah. So a little squat. And obviously, if you're watching, thinking not in a million years, you can go up onto a chair, squat, and then lift up a little off the chair and down again. The really important thing to do in this squat, which is sometimes called the spider pose, is that the knees don't come in and come out of their hinge joint. 
they go out over those second toes and I have to actually push them out that way. And then however you're sitting, just rock a little from side to side. And at this point, you're probably thinking, hmm, wish I'd stayed in bed. Well, from side to side and then up. So I'm going to move back so you can see me. So coming up and then do the opposite elbow, so opposite knee, just to warm up. And if possible, doing it so that you are straight in your back. Okay, sit down right up, sit me, and use your abdominal core to keep nice and upright. Good, and then turn like so. Oh, you won't have seen this, but one of my students was actually under here, the eaves, and she stood up and realized <laughs> you think I need help to move. So, turning. And turning the other way. Okay, that nice hip work. Hip work often gets overlooked. We really need to keep that femur going into the socket lubricated. And this is doing it weight bearing. And sometimes we do it lying down with the legs in the air, doing it non weight bearing. Okay, and then opening out as much as possible. We turn the feet out, but not all the way out out and if you're thinking oh crikey this is going to get easier in a minute but you can have some blocks here and just walk the hands forward okay and we're going to do that swing backwards and forwards so this is going to really stretch the adductors arm of the arm of the face front of the face facing the floor there we go backwards and forwards Lovely. And if that feels really tight here, which it does for me, then ease it in a little and do the uh, rocking table, wide leg rocking table with the legs a little bit closer together. Okay, good. And then push to come back up at halfway, which is where I'm at. Just check your knees are going over your second toe and then hands onto the knees open out. So we're now in the sumo wrestler pose. Okay, good. Lovely. And then um, I'm doing the quarterback shoulders. I very rarely let the shoulders go up, but you're allowed to have the shoulders go up in this one. But if you want, you could get them down by lengthening like a tortoise coming out of its shell, head coming out of the shell. Okay, and then rock from side to side. I would strongly suggest if you can do it, to only rock from side to side if you know that knee is going over that second toe. If it's going anywhere else, don't, don't because it'll damage that, the cartilage in there and cause problems. So that's okay, isn't it? Yeah, it is okay. Looks worse than it is. And then heel toe, heel toe up and arms out and just twist through the shoulder joint. So let's see. Let's see, we need, we need energy boosting and we need probably mood lifting to get us through our day. So I would recommend lifting the arms straight up. Okay, I'll tilt a little so you can see my hand. But I'll have to come back in a minute to tilt it back again. Okay, stretch, stretch, stretch. Hands together and lift like a rocket. So we've got the rib cage coming away well from the pelvis and we're making this space here to here huge, long. And then can you go up even higher and onto your toes? And then I'm cheating because I've got the wall behind me. So it's easy. But actually, let's move away from the wall. Let's try and balance. And then on your toes, I want you to turn around once. That exercises your toes, your feet your ankles, and then counterclockwise turn, second. That was cheating, I said once, and then I made you do another one. That was naughty of me. Coming down again, stretch out. I'm still on my toes, guys. Still on my toes. Walking backwards and forwards a little. Drop the shoulders. 
Okay, and now I'm doing exaggerated hip swings as though you're walking on high heel shoes. Okay, breathe out and down. Breathe in, bring the energy up to the crown of the head. Widen the feet out, toes pointing two o'clock and 10 o'clock. 12 o'clock is the front and breathe out. And down, breathe in, coming up. Breathe out through the mouth. Right down, face the torso, lift, breathe in. And once you've got the hang of it, you can close your eyes, breathe out and down again. Breathe in. Oh, I've run out of in. Ah, oh, breathe out. <laughs> okay, I'd like you to do that three more times with your own breath. Your own breath rhythm. You can have a pause at the top, that's good. And try and make that out breath as long and slow as possible. But remember, it's not competitive. We do exactly what feels comfortable for us. I think I'm cheating somehow. Let's see, just follow my breath. Cheating in yoga is not serious cheating. Cheating in yoga is just making a little mistake. Wrong word, I think, my bad. Okay, and then opening out, backs of the hands together and opening out and back, 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 back. And then clasp the hands behind you, stretch out, okay? So this will be interesting here, all right? Yeah. Then chest out, lift, lift, uh, lift. Oh, dear me. Okay, hold that lift. And then separate the feet some more. I think you know what's coming. So uh, breathing in, lengthen from the crown of the head, breathing out, going down. And lift the hands to the ceiling. Um, I was once teaching a week long yoga retreat, and a man came to it who was about, I think about 87, I think. Anyway, he not only went into this pose, but he took his arms parallel to the floor, going over his head. He must have had very hypermobile shoulder joints. And then he proceeded to do every single yoga pose as an absolute pro, we were in awe of him. And he'd never done yoga before. So obviously his body was um, hyper flexible, hyper mobile, which can be tricky, but he was also genetically quite flexible. So breathing into that, tucking the chin in to the chest. Okay, and don't worry if you can't do it very well, a little is better than nothing and dropping the head as much as possible. Breathe, drop. The head's about eight pounds of weight, okay? So then breathing out, use the weight of the head to keep the head dropping down. Release the hands down and hold on to the elbows, tucking the chin in. Oh, and relaxing and releasing. Relaxing and releasing, relaxing and releasing. And now we let the shoulders drop towards the ground and open out the shoulder blades and breathe into that. So as we're here in this lovely soothing forward bend, all the forward bends are soothing, calming. Um, I just like to check, turn the awareness inwardly to the mind. Are we being kind to ourselves? In this moment. Can we just be in this moment, which in this moment is in itself quite fine, in a probably warm, dry space, having the luxury of a little time to do some self-compassionate yoga. So just checking if we can that the mind is soft 
and gentle towards ourselves. Well done. So I would say, well done, Sarah. Well done for getting up. Well done for getting yoga clothes on. Well done for getting up into your yoga room or yoga space. And well done for simply just being here this morning. Good on you. Okay, from there I drop the hands. Just going to bend the knees over that second toe a little. So, yeah, it's kind of like um, a frog position that we're lifting up and out of. Good for the hips, good for the knees. Okay, and then walk the feet together. Okay, into that forward bend. And remember, for some people, this forward bend, especially for men, where their um, uh, hamstrings are tight and probably genetically tight, don't worry too much if you have to bend the knees and that you can only go as far as the shins. If you're someone who's naturally a little bit more flexible with doing yoga a lot or just born that way, you know, tuck the chin in and just ease into the forward bend. Okay, and remember again, it's not competitive. I try to pull back 30% most of the time so that I'm doing gentle poses rather than striving because if I strive and struggle, then it's like you're lying on the acupuncture table, the needles are in and you're starting to do a marathon. Actually, we need the body relaxed, not under strain, mm -hmm. and let the pose work on us. It's almost like we get out of the way a little, find a comfortable position. It might be here, it might be here, it might be like that, and just pausing in the pose, and then straightening up. Oh, and then because that was a forward bend, let's do a backward bend. Oh, good. Okay. Stretching back, looking up, pushing the pelvis forward. So you'll feel it here, just in there. Okay. Oh, nice. Look up if you can. Opening this front throat, thyroid, parathyroid area, nice long stretch. Um, we want the lymphatic system open. So really push those shoulders back. Begin to stimulate in here, yeah, under the arms, around the front chest, chin up to the ceiling. Push forward. So in this one, you do actually work a little to get into it. And then we try to just breathe and be in it. Oh, great. Wonderful. Coming forward from there, not deep forward, because we've just done a counter pose for a forward bend. I'd like you to make fists with the hands and rub here into that lower back area, nice and vigorously. So that'll build up heat, bring more blood supply to that area, help to rejuvenate muscles in there. Also get rid of some of the lactic acid building up from quite an intense forward bend and back bend. Okay, and then nicely just rubbing up and down the legs, caressing, stroking, massaging. And the nice thing that um, neuroscience has shown that if we touch the body like this with affection, with kindness, not come on legs, come on legs, but kindly, kindly, the body responds with increased oxytocin, which is the kind, feel, kind feeling we get when someone gives us a hug or greets us warmly. So let's just do that to ourselves this morning. A bit of kind touch as we reassure the legs that we're working hard. And then when we've done that, just coming down to a comfortable position, nothing too major. So I know lots of people find it so hard to sit cross-legged. And I only sit cross-legged because I've been sitting cross-legged since as long as I can remember. But if you find it hard, obviously use props to support. And if that's just awful, sit on the chair. You know, number one rule of yoga, be kind to you. So here we are, sitting on the floor. Let's see what the weather's like out there. Ooh, some blue sky, good. Could probably be raining in 20 minutes, but hey. And then push the arms away from you and straighten the back. 
Drop the shoulders. Good. And swing from side to side. Just feel this morning how our back is because you may have been sleeping in a scrunched up position, which is normal, it's what most of us do. And I don't want the discs to be still all scrunched up and then you turn. I'd like the discs between the vertebrae to be stacked nice and even, and then we glide over them. Yeah? Can you feel that? Yeah? Yeah? So you can imagine them kind of turning and twisting, and that's good. That will rejuvenate the discs, and it will also help you to be a little less stiff throughout the rest of the day. Then placing, if you're sitting on a chair or sitting on a cushion or cross-legged, placing hands on the knees. We're just about to finish, so think of the nice word breakfast if you're doing this first thing in the morning. Left hand to right knee, right hand around the back. If you need to, you can put a block or higher block around the back, yeah? And this hand actually goes around and holds on to that block or the back of a chair. And this hand holds on strongly to your knee. If you're doing it by right, so, same. So if you're doing it with the legs stretched out, same. So we're going to use this hand to help us move. What we don't want to do is collapse and then move. That would be not a good idea for the discs of the spine. So let's lengthen up from the crown of the head, which like so. Hopefully the spine right up the center is evenly distributed in a perpendicular, that perpendicular line. And then I don't want the back of the neck also scrunched up. So open that up similarly, breathe in, lengthen. Breathe out, turn. 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 Now, when you eventually get to a position where you think, yeah, that's, that's pretty good, I'm, I'm fine there. Again, we kind of inwardly step away from struggling. And again, it's rather like the acupuncture needles in place. Let the yoga pose now, if you can, work on you. Let it do its business. Let it do its wonderful magic. Into the organs, lymphatic system, nervous system, all the physical muscles, soft tissue, tendons, ligaments. all around the body, doing wonderful things to internal organs that I won't go into today. It's on most of my other um, yoga things. So coming, breathing out, coming round to the front, placing the hands on the knees. And if you are sitting cross-legged, just swapping legs for a moment, but the other foot goes outside. Hands on the knees, lift up from the crown of the head, right hand comes over to the left knee. The left hand goes around the back, and the left hand is like a staff, nice and pushing you up nice and strong, hopefully nice and perpendicular in the spine. Breathe in, lift from the crown, and again, breathe out, turning. Breathe in, lift from the crown, breathe out, turning. So it's as though you're wringing out the torso, like you'd wring out a sponge. Breathe in, lifting from the crown of the head. And eventually in the pose, turn, look into your peripheral vision right round the left. Allow the body to do what it does. Be aware of sounds inside the room, maybe even outside the room. Moment of simply being in this moment. Being kind. Gentle, tender to ourselves. Lovely, working deeply actually on the internal organs, especially the kidneys in these poses. But of course, obviously, spinal column discs. We're breathing out, coming round. 
these twist, twists are also good in here for the digestive area, you know, ascending, transverse, descending colon, small intestine, stomach area, because we're actually maneuvering them and massaging them. And that peristaltic action as the food goes through, it's being encouraged. So actually that's it for today. Didn't want to do too long, more breakfast. And I'm going to try and do this most mornings. So if you want to join in, do. And uh, thank you. Very nice to see you.